that is having a favourite relative the same as having a favourite flavour of crisps, just a matter of taste? Or does it cause division in the family? Well, joining us now is the grandmother behind the drama, Emma Parsons Reed. Um, we're also joined uh, by psychologist Lucy Beresford, who believes you should never vocalise having a favourite. Good morning to both of you. Emma, um, can I start with you? Um, you've broken the golden rule, haven't you, here, by having a favourite. What do the family think? Uh, well, they know anyway. Um, it's not. It wasn't a huge surprise to them that um, Elise is my my favourite officially, as written in the in the papers. Um, obviously, as you said, I love them all. Um, I love them all dearly, and I'm there for all of them. But I think Elise is like a little mini me, and there's a bond there, and she needs me. And um, I mean, there she is. I mean, she's just gorgeous. We're just like little peas in a pod. We really are. Um, I mean, we argue, obviously, because we're so much alike. She's annoying like me, controlling like me, <laughs> opinionated like me. Um, but I just love that in her because, obviously, I must love myself quite a bit. The others, <laughs> but, Emma, how the do others... your other granddaughters respond to it? Because it's not just kind of you saying it's favourites. You also have talked about the fact that, actually, you like to spoil Elise more, so you quite like to spend a bit more money on her when it comes to birthdays and treats, for example. Do the others not mind? To be honest, I do slip them, you know, the odd fiver. I mean, if Elise is watching this now, I'm sorry, Elise, but they do get the odd fiver or tenner in their bank account. So, you know, and I am close to them. I'm not, you know, I do things with them as well. But they, they know that Elise and I have this special bond and that Elise needs me. If, if Elise is upset, I'm the only one who can calm her down. And they, they'll ring me and say, Right, Elise is upset, you know, you need to come round, Noonie. And so I'll rush round and, and pl placate Elise. I'm there for her. As you've probably read, her father isn't on the scene full time. She's got a wonderful stepfather. Um, but obviously her four sisters have got their mum and dad and Elise has just got her mum and stepdad, who is fantastic. I must say he is. Um, so I, I've always felt from a, when she was a baby, I sort of made up for that. And I can't quite let that go. But having said that, we're a very forward thinking family and we will discuss um, relationships with each other. And I am the favourite grandmother of the eldest and the youngest, but the three middle ones, I'm not. Right. They prefer other grandparents. So it works both ways. And I hope the other I'm grandparents like... aren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, so do I, so do I. Let's bring in Lucy here. Uh, Lucy, really good to talk to you again. Um, what do you make of this family dynamic? Is this the golden rule that has been broken by saying that one of my grandchildren is my favourite? Yes, it's the guilty secret of pretty much every parent or grandparent that there is usually one child that they favour, uh, but you daren't say it because that kind of favouritism can cause huge resentments. But the really interesting thing is that it's so transparent in this family. There isn't any hiding it, whereas usually what happens is that 20 or 30 years down the line, someone books an appointment with me saying, I've carried this burden for most of my life. I, I don't think I was the favourite child. How do I deal with it? Whereas in this family, at least everybody knows where they stand. The problem is love is really meant to be very unconditional and one can't really help uh, what birth order you have or what gender you are, whether you're uh, the product of a relationship that broke down. So it would be lovely to think that all of the grandchildren are loved equally. The trouble is, and, and parents would, would argue the same thing as well, you, you can't give all of your attention and all of your love in the same way to all your children because they're very different people. And you might rub each other up the wrong way. Personality-wise, you might not fit with one of your children. But for sure, this is the kind of thing that happens in a lot of families. It just doesn't get talked about until the will is read several decades down the line. Yeah, and as you say, it's often the, the sort of the unspoken, uh, Lucy. But in this case, as it is out there, what does it do to sibling relationships mm. when they know that one of them is loved more, potentially, than the others? I think there is often a discrepancy between the head and the heart. There can often be an intellectual understanding as to why that child was favoured. So in this particular case, there seems to be a lot being made of the fact that the original family unit broke down and that uh, maybe the father isn't on the scene. But what that means is that that's an intellectual understanding of what's going on. And so a lot of siblings think, OK, well, maybe my my sibling had more needs. Maybe my sibling is the baby of the family. There's all sorts of intellectual rationalization. But what that doesn't do is it doesn't really touch how it feels in your heart, which is 
but I want to be loved for who I am. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't want to be competing for these um, emotional resources from my parents and feel like I'm always having to compete. Of course, what we might argue is that that sets you up really well for the real world, which is where you have to compete in employment, you have to keep compete in the dating world, you have to compete in a lot of ways, but it would be so much easier if you didn't have to compete in your family as well. Emma, what do you make of that, that this is an intellectual argument? So you say to all your grandchildren, I love you all equally, but you all have different needs. Yes, I, I, I do agree a little of what she says. I, I do think that I feel like if my own grandmother preferred my sister and there was only two of us, so that hurt. I, you know, she overtly preferred my sister who was much older. Um, so doesn't it, hurt your, doesn't it hurt your other grandchildren then if you understand no, what because, it's like to be because, hurt? No, because back in those days, nothing was ever said, it was just seen. But now I, my family, we discuss things. The kids and I discuss all sorts of topics and they, I treat them like adults and we, you know, the seven-year-old, I'm her favourite, I don't really know why, because I'm quite hard on her, but she, she I'm her favourite. But say the other children, my husband is one favourite grandparent, the mother-in-law is another favourite, and I understand why they have those bonds, because they're very, very close. And I don't see by saying it, I've got favourite, that it's a massive hoo-ha, but what clearly it is. What does your daughter think? Uh, Emma of it. Oh, I drive her mad. I think I just. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, um, she just says, "Mum, I love you, but I don't always like you." And you know, she. Sorry, I was just going to bring Lucy in because Lucy, you were grimacing in that last answer. I, I grimaced through quite a lot of it, actually, but my heart in a way goes out to Emma because really the original trauma is that she knows exactly how painful this was as a child that actually she wasn't the golden child as far as her grandparents were concerned and and that clearly still lives with her and that's tr there's an attempt to try to rewrite that in the present or to compensate for something that had already happened to you but I don't really want to turn this into a therapy session for Emma because that's not very fair on her but the thing. idea <laughs> <laughs> that um, you treat, for example, you treat your children as adults. That's not what they are. They're children and they need you to be good mates and good fun. But they also need to know where the boundaries are. And what I'm hearing is an awful lot of emotional manipulation, if I can say that, in order to stay the current favourite or not be the favourite. And that's what I was grimacing about. Mm, I wonder well, what I your mean... response is, Emma. I understand what, what Lucy's saying, but obviously I'm living in that family and I know, I mean, I can turn up at that house, I can rock up at that house and I'm like a film star. They just rush down the stairs at me, throw themselves at me. There's no better fan club than my grandchildren. Aww. And I love them all dearly. And they love me and I'm quite hard with them. I'm quite, okay. you know, I, I want them to have manners. I'm very strict with them. They eat properly at the table. I feel like I'm that person who is, who is there for them. I, I think you probably are harsh but fair and they love you yes. as a result. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Fascinating discussion. Emma Parsonese mm -hmm. and psychologist Lucy Beresford. Lots of you have been getting in touch. Keep those thoughts coming in.